Hey guys, my name is Zafira and here with me today we have Kingsley, Hugh and Eski. Today we will be going through a quick tutorial on fitness which is a lightweight open source software for acceptance testing. So for the slides we will be going through the following as shown. To understand the purpose of fitness, it is essential that we know the exact significance of acceptance testing. Acceptance testing is the process of confirming that the system satisfies the stakeholders' requirements. This is the form of testing that is performed by clients or end users as well as developers but does not usually focus on identifying errors within the code. So essentially, we are checking to see if a given input is proving a correct output. In theory, if all the acceptance tests pass, then the project is complete. Fitness is a software collaboration tool that automates acceptance testing. Uh, it is used by customers, business analysts, testing professionals, support staff, management and all other stakeholders to find out what the system should do and compare it to what it actually does. Um, one of the goals of fitness is to encourage collaboration. So it is an open source software that can be used by developers, testers and the customers. Um, because unlike unit testing, fitness presents human re readable tests. Fitness is a wiki web server, so it requires no configuration and the installation consists of downloading a one executable jar file. Um, this starts up a server which gives access to the fitness website. Um, it is a wiki because it allows the user to create its own web pages on which test tables are created. So how does fitness differentiate from traditional methods of black box testing? Firstly, it provides feedback very early in the project. Um, however, it is encouraged that tests should be written before the system is implemented. Tests can be run as many times required because anyone with access to a server can simply run the tests automatically or manually. One advantage of using fitness is that tests are deterministic so they either turn red or green depending on success or failure of the test. Um, if a test turns green, it suggests that either the requirement has been met or the test isn't, prop isn't set up properly, um, in which case it needs to be worked on. Um, the more tests that turn green, the more closer the system is getting to become a better, um, refined and valuable product that stakeholders require. Fitness should definitely not be used as an alternative to unit testing. Um, although unit tests test the low-level behaviour of a system, they cannot identify if a specific requirement of the system is actually being met. So a system may end up with well-refactored code, but with no business value. Similarly, if there is a lack of unit testing um, and fitness is used as an alternative, then the system is likely to end up with a high business value, but with inefficient code. Furthermore, fitness does not support record and play operation operations, so it does not provide an effective way to test GUIs. Um, also, it should not be used for load and performance testing. There are two test systems integrated with fitness. FIT stands for Framework for Integrated Testing. It is the engine that processes each table using the fixture code that the table corresponds to. Therefore, FIT runs this test, but Fitness is the front-end wiki and HTML to make it possible to create and display its tables of results. The HTML parsing is done on the system under test before the fixtures are called, which means that the actual test comprises a large amount of code. However, FIT is becoming less preferable because it can be run on various ports and as programmers add to the implementation, there are incompatibility issues as tests written on one platform may not work on another. Fitness allows fit tests to be shared within software development teams. In contrast, SLIM, also known as Simple Invocation Method, is a newer system that has very little code in the system under test because all the tables are processed in fitness. It is the job of the SLIM executor to break down the test into simple instructions and the SLIM runner then uses the fixtures to call the system. So any changes made to the runner will not affect any changes on the executor and so the test can be used on all platforms. We will be focusing on SLIM tests for the rest of our presentation. 
To make a test in fitness, a fixture must be created. This can refer to classes and functions that the developer has written, which fitness and slim uses to process a test table. A class path must be provided to point to where fixture code is located. The first row of the table usually states the name of the class that is to be tested, and the first few columns are the inputs of a test. These usually refer to setter methods in a class. The latter columns contain the outputs for the given input by specifying the name of the method with a question mark. These are methods that return a particular value. To download fitness, go to fitnet.org and choose download fitness and plugins and you can download the latest version of fitness under the form of an, of an executable Java file from here. And now open command prompt or terminal if you're using a Mac and go to the location where you save your version of fitness at. So I'm going to download and um, to execute to execute a fitness, type in Java hyphen jar fitness dot jar and P to specify the port number you're using. You can choose any port number, it can be any four digit number uh, as long as the port is not being used by any other uh, any other application. And now fitness is starting. And now go to, to your browser and type in localhost. So before creating a test in fitness, I will walk you through the code that we are going to test first. Uh, we are going to test a class called simple calc in this example and it's basically a simple calculator that does some basic arithmetics so we have two fields here called first and second double and the method sum is supposed to return the sum of first and second the method diff is supposed to return the difference between first and second and now go back to your browser and let's create a test. Uh, click on Add Child, choose Test, and write in uh, a name for the test. In this case, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it Test Simple Calc. And click on Add. And because the Test Simple Calc is a child page of front page, so to access it, just type in front page dot simple calc. Sorry, test simple calc. Now to edit the test code, click on edit. And I've already prepared the test code. So the first line, define test system slim, is just to specify that we're, we are using slim for our test system. The second line is the path to the location where um, the compiled Java classes are. So make sure you compile your Java code before you run the test. And now import fitness example. We're just importing the packages, the Java packages that we are testing. And now comes the test table. In fitness, um, tests are expressed as tables of input data and expected output data. So this whole block of code is a test table. And the first line is um, the class name, the name of the class that we are testing, simple calc. The second line is the header, so the input is first um, and second, and the output uh, is sum. We're testing the method sum, that's why we are put putting a question mark there. And you can see um, some of the values that we have put in here. For example, four, five as first and second, and we're expecting that sum should return nine, or four, four, Eight. Um, then we have ten, zero, ten, and you can also use a range of values as the expected output instead of a precise value. So in here, we have one, two, and we're expecting something greater than two. Or in here, we have three, four, and we're expecting something between five and eight. We know it's seven. Right, so click on save and now click on test. Good, everything passed. Four, five, nine, four, four, eight, 
10 yep and now I'll go back and I will add in a dummy test that is supposed to fail so I have 2 as first and 4 as second and my sum method will return um, 2 plus 4 is 6 for sure but I want to put in 3 click on save click on test and you can see um, it's marked as red because uh, we expected 3 but it's returning 6 and now I'll go back and I will show you how to add a, another test for another method so I will put in diff to test the diff method remember to put in the question mark and um, expected values for a diff so 4 5 should be minus 1 this is on a past um, 4 4 should be 0 10 0 should be 10 1 2 um, should be greater than minus 5 and 3 4 um, should be minus 1 and 2 4 this test is gonna fail I'm gonna put in minus 9 and click on save and you can see a new column is added and click on test now you can see that um, the test passed when it's marked as green and it's fa it fails when it's marked as red. So when we execute this command, it starts our fitness on port 80, which is the default port. So in case you have an application on your computer that uses this port, and this port is blocked, then you might not be able to start your fitness. In this case, you would like to specify the port you want to run your fitness on. So again, we navigate to the place where we have our fitness.jar. Then we specify the port as 2222. So now the fitness is running on port 2222. Now we want to add a child. And instead of having a simple test in the front page, we want to have a suite where we can put our tests in. And we name it as simple calculation and add up. Now we want to have access to this and we want to be able to navigate to this page from the front page. So we add simple calculation here so we can click on it and navigate to the page. So here we have it. Now we want to add tests to our suite. So the first test we want to add is addition test. And the second one is difference test. So really two basic calculations. We got addition test and then edit. We updated with the contents we've already prepared for this test, which is just adding two numbers and giving the addition. You copy paste it. Now when we click on the suite tab on the left, it runs all the tests. So here the first one is all green which means it has passed all the tests. The second one has wrong answers, two wrong answers it says, which were done by us on purpose. Other than that we can also let's say you remove versions, refactor and values from the properties. So now we don't have those tabs on the left and we can put it back as we want. Here we have tags and help text and many other helpful features that we can modify. We have refactors so we can replace strings. We can check the recent changes made, where it was made in exact time with the date. We can check the test history with the pass, fail, the time it was tested, and then the results. We can see the exact output again. Here we have a set of references that we refer to for this presentation. We hope that you have found this presentation useful and thank you very much for watching.